morning, YouTube. All right, we've been home a couple of days and we've recovered. Ah, from up there. This is... It's foggy, isn't it? Isn't it foggy? Goodness me. Goodness me. Anyway, we're going to go and have a look at the battery logs. Uh, the system has been up and running for a while now. Um... So it'll be interesting to see what's uh, going on. And uh, yeah, give you all a look of the graphs that this thing, this uh, DIA 8 kilowatt inverter produces. Or well, all the DIA inverter, in, uh, inverters produce very good logs uh, once you have them set up to do it. All right, so we'll see you in the, on okay, the computer. Here we go. Uh, you can see the time and everything down at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, the date, the time. Um, so yeah, it's past eight o'clock and it's as foggy as anything outside. All right, now what we've got turned on at the top is production, which is the solar consumption, which is what we consume. That's the dark red one. And then we have state of charge, which is this one here. And I also have uh, night time turned on. Um, this one here, diurnal pattern, okay? So we've got night time, morning time. All right, so you can see we commissioned it on the 25th. The electrician finished all of his work and we commissioned the system and it, uh, well, I think if you go back and watch that video um, that I made of the commissioning, uh, not of the commissioning, of the, the, the system's finally done, even when I was making the video, it was pouring down rain. But, and and uh, while we were waiting for that to happen, we were running a generator. So um, I'm not going to add that down to the bottom because that just gets too confusing for you then. Um, but once the install was done, I mean, we still run the generator just to get the batteries. We don't, typically we don't fill the batteries up on the generator. We, we get them you know, to where they're going to last us. So the um, state of charge is all done, most of it's done by the generator on the 25th, so don't worry about that too much. But you can just see there, um, yeah, the, the solar we had on, on the startup. Okay, let's go now. On the 25th, we were home. On the 26th, we had to uh, rush up to uh, out to the bush to a farm and uh, help an old mate out. So you can see we left in the morning. Uh, this is a hot water system running here. All that there's the hot water system. We hopped up, doodled around a bit, made a cuppa. That's that there. That's that 2.25 kilowatts. That's what the electric kettle uses. That spike. And then we left. And you can see there's this is just a fridge turning on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, because it's a, a very nice, uh, very economical inverter fridge freezer. Okay, uh, 27th, we were away still. Yes, I've got, I've got the dates written down here because of me, uh, memory's not what it used to be. And you can see just running the fridge freezer, fridge freezer, we went down to 83%. And uh, we charged up really quick. This is the again, that's the hot water service, that one there. And then we're not home. And you can see the solar is mirroring the load of the inverter because uh, the batteries are already full, so it's only just doing the load. And then we go into the diurnal pattern, the nighttime cycle, and the solar drops right off. And there we are with the uh, fridge freezer. All right, on the 28th, we got back on the 28th in the, in the afternoon at 1500, we got back. Um, the batteries, of course, got full. There's a nice spike there of 4.4 uh, kilowatts because it didn't take much to full them. While we weren't here, we dropped down to 83%. That's just the house's own consumption. 
Um, or if you like vampire loads, things that are on all the time, like um, uh, security systems, um, cameras, yeah, yeah all, all that sort of stuff. And of course, hot water service, which is just there. And the fridge freezer, and we got back here because the first thing we do when we walk in the door was put the electric kettle on. That's that spike there, 2.27. And uh, it was cold in the house, and we ran the uh, reverse cycle air conditioning because the house had cooled down because there was nobody here to light the fire. Um, so we used the electricity to heat the house uh, out of the um, green bank batteries and we pulled those all the way down to 58% by the time we went to bed and uh, with all the other loads you can see here we got up fairly early uh, but the other loads we ended up at 45% and this is the first full day we were home you can see here the hot water service the other various loads coming on and off, washing machines and bits and pieces. And we got a nice peak there of 6.89, nearly 7 kilowatt peak, which was a nice peak. We got full, lovely. And we go to today, and here we are today. So you can see the solar, it's working absolutely brilliantly, the, the graphs. Uh, are beautiful, precise. We'll just go back to the uh, 25th again and have a look down the bottom now. Okay. Oh, look, we've got uh, 716 watts coming in at the solar. You all seen how foggy it was out there. Uh, we're consuming 255 watts uh, and the batteries are putting out 301 watt. So uh, the difference between 301 and 255 is what the inverter is using to produce that power from the batteries to the 230 volt. Okay. And then we go here. We've got uh, the 25th commissioning day. And you can see it's just all cloudy. This is very accurate. Okay. This is very accurate. It's cloud and rain. Cloud and rain, cloud and rain, cloud and rain, cloud and rain. And today there's no clouds there. So we might be having a sunny day or it just hasn't updated yet. It says up here drizzling. It just hasn't put it down the bottom here yet. Um, so look, what have our peaks been? All right, we got uh, three kilowatt that day. Uh, production is 12.5 kilowatts. On the 27th, the production is 7.3, 7.6. And then we had 16 kilowatts production on the 29th. I wonder what we'll end up with today. All right, so that's a pretty uh, quick uh, but precise rundown. And up, uh, if you um, go back to the last full day, it tells you up here your productions and uh, total consumption. Yeah, I'm not sure how this all works. Battery discharge. I'm, I'm not sure how this all works here. Oh, that's today. Is it? What's this month? There we go. That's better. Okay, so now that we have the solar come in, we can see the CO2 that we... we, we uh, haven't used and in Western Australia you've got two sources of power well three if you count solar um, and they're getting more of that than they're telling people but anyway that's just my view you, you've got um, coal or, or natural gas uh, natural gas is almost as polluting as coal so all you people running your electric cars and charging them in the city your the uh, CO2 produced uh, for you to do that, um, you're putting out about as p much pollution as a semi-trailer. Electric cars are not um, are not clean energy in in Australia at all because of the way we generate our power. 
So you're driving a nice little electric car around suffering during the heat because you can't turn the air conditioner on because then you can't drive anywhere. You can't turn the heater on in winter because then you can't, haven't got the range to drive anywhere. All you can do is put the window down, suck in everyone else's pollution uh, and the pollution you're causing by charging off the grid with electricity off the state-run electric companies. Um, that's my view on electric cars as well. So there you go. You want to save real money? Okay, put your house off grid and uh, push for hydrogen vehicles. And that way we'll be just pumping out uh, oxygen and water vapour. All right. There we go, people. So that's an update on everything and my views on electric vehicles and how we should be running them. Keep safe. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, remember to tick the box and ring the bell. And please comment on my videos. That really helps my channel a lot.